are reaching the half of 2015 and things are already looking much better than the dreadful 2014. With new games coming fast and the end of the year promises to be a great time. While some of the heavyweights will only launch during 2015, we decided to let you know about some great games that you can either play already, if you were lucky enough to get into the beta of course, or should be playable in just a few months. Most of these games are currently in very restricted betas, and a few of them will probably stay like that by the end of the year. But we already played all of them, in one shape or another, so we can give you our sincere recommendation about all of them. If you couldn't play them yet, hang in there guys. You should be able to do so in a few months, perhaps with a couple of exceptions only. So let's begin. FreeMMOStation.com So, first off, there's Echo of Soul, and an all-around nice fantasy MMORPG that should please those who aren't looking for something groundbreaking or extremely addicting. In fact, we prefer to call Echo of Soul a nice little time killer while you wait for the big names to become available. If you play it without major expectations, you're going to find a polished and in-depth MMO whose major flaw is that it's a little bit generic and unharmful. Open beta began on May 28th, 2015. The big guns are beginning to show up, quite literally speaking. Armored Warfare is Obsidian Entertainment shot at World of Tanks, using the Cry Engine 3. And this game is actually looking like it could destroy Wargaming's blockbuster in a second, if we only look at the graphics side of things. However, that's not what matters most. But Armored Warfare actually looks pretty much in depth. So full of little details under the hood of each vehicle in the game. The way the game deals with damage and all these little variables going on in such a visible passion that it's almost psychotic leaves us with great hopes for the future of this shooter. A niche genre it may be, but there's so much going on for this game that it could easily draw the attention of many, many players. First Early Access began on May 27th, 2015. Talking about niche, World of Warships says hi. The third major entry into the World Of series, not counting the spin-offs, World Of Warships is a difficult game to pull off, but it could turn out to be extremely rewarding for the studio. There's definitely a lack of tactical naval warfare games out there, and despite the confessed lack of submarines, there are plenty of ships to provide a nice range of tactical options. If you like your games slow-paced, rewarding, and beautifully realized, then World Of Warships could be one for you. It has all the makings of a sleeper hit and could easily surpass World Of Warplanes, although it's nearly impossible to become as popular as World of Tanks. Closed beta began on March 12th, 2015. So we were a bit torn between Daybreak Games Company's uh, Landmark or Radiant World's more Minecraft-like Sky Saga, but in the end, we decided to mention the game from the studio formerly known as Sony Online Entertainment. Landmark is in closed beta for uh, over a year, since March 26, 2014, and it's slowly emphasis on slow, becoming what the studio planned it to be. Combat was added as it was planned a long time ago, but it's not exactly getting the most acclaim from players who hoped for a nice building game. As a building sandbox, Landmark is superb, and you can already see some amazing constructions in the game world, but the beta is also getting a lot of negative remarks about the grind needed to build anything decent. There's also a lot of potential in this game, but keep in mind that it still needs quite a bit of polishing, both performance-wise as well as in the business model side of things, to become what it really should be. Closed beta began March 26th, 2014. Splash Damage has a few nice shooters on its catalog, and the studio has barely deviated from this genre, but they've always been a tiny step away from brilliance. It looks like history is kind of repeating itself with Dirty Bomb, the newest online first-person shooter from the British studio. While this team-based shooter is praised for its fast-paced gameplay, and above all the fun factor that is sadly missing from most games of the like, there's just this, I don't know, th there's this, this missing component and it's preventing it from really becoming a top game. Maybe it's the balance, which is still a bit iffy. Maybe there's a few guns still need to be tweaked to make them feel worthwhile. But overall, really, it's, it's, it's already a nice and if slightly unpolished experience. That's really, certainly only going to get better during the coming months. Open beta began June 2nd, 2015. 
Blizzard is definitely interested in following Valve's footsteps lately. Apart from the upcoming shooter Overwatch, which is trying to take a stab at the Team Fortress 2 scene, and looks pretty awesome we might say, there's also Heroes of the Storm, a MOBA, and I mean excuse me, an online brawler game. Truth be told, this isn't your typical MOBA game, and we're not just talking about the undeniable appeal that the heroes have. Playing the characters with Blizzard faces and franchise of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, the classic Lost Vikings, it's really all good enough to convince a large player base, but what Heroes of the Storm intends to be is simply fun. It may look simple at first, but what it actually does is strip the clutter that exists in many of its rivals, Dota 2 specifically, and goes straight for pure fun. It grows on you and suddenly you're, you're hooked, something that you didn't even see coming. This will be a big game for sure. The question is though, if it will be big enough to scratch the supremacy of the MOBA Kings, League of Legends, Dota 2, and Smite. Here's where the storm officially launched, June 2nd, 2015. Years in the making and mostly in complete silence during that time, 2015 was the year when Skyforge finally got out there and we discovered just what the Outlaws team and Obsidian Entertainment had in store for us. While far from a revolution and featuring plenty of familiar mechanics, Skyforge actually has a lot going for it. From the uncommon sci-fi and fantasy mix to the interesting range of playable classes, which allow you to switch at will when you're not in combat. But the cool thing about Skyforge is that there's this objective, this goal, that could actually turn the game on its head. Becoming a god, and doing so will give you some awesome powers and the ability to earn followers. With the world in constant threat, you'll have to group to fight with the invasions of hostile gods, events that will either give you some nice rewards or turn Aeleon slowly but surely into a darker place. We are actually very curious to see what kind of transformations the invasions will bring to the game world. First closed beta began March 11th, 2015 and open beta is planned for this summer. Alright guys, seriously, raise your hand if you didn't see this one coming. NCSoft finally gave up, so to speak, and it's turning Wildstar into a free-to-play game that it really should have always been. No mandatory fees, just an optional premium subscription if you want a few perks to help you out along the way. And despite all the chaos that followed the release with many layoffs at Carbine Studios, Wildstar remains a really good MMO that takes inspiration from the best. And while truly far from groundbreaking, it manages to stand out thanks to its really unique visual style. Sure, questing is of the terror like and you need a big dose of patience to go through plenty of the repetitive quests, but in the end, there's a lot more pros than cons, and we bet many of you are going to enjoy it despite some of the slight flaws. Wildstar goes free to play in Fall 2015. We've got a special message for those of you who thought this would never happen. In your face! Ahem. Anyways, Blade & Soul is finally awakening from its developer-induced coma, and closed beta is coming to North America and Europe, Fall 2015. So, question, did this visually unique martial arts MMORPG age so much that it's not as interesting as it would have been if it was released in 2013? Yeah, sure, it's not the same anymore, but there's still something about the art style that makes it stand the passage of time. A little bit better than your run-of-the-mill orcs and elves fantasy MMO. And it seems that NCSoft actually took the time to give us something more than a rushed localization effort by making a tailor-made client that supposedly takes the best from the existing versions. And the news that many of you were actually expected, it's not going to be censored as it was the case with the China version. So you can expect a lot of super sexy martial arts action. Blade & Soul enters closed beta in the fall of 2015. Will it make it during this year or not? Is Black Desert actually entering beta in North America and Europe in 2015, as it was previously announced? Eh, it's probably a bit of a stretch, but we want to believe in that it could still happen. The Korean version is going along smoothly, with class after class being added to the game. Even Gandalf joined the party. We should have more news really soon. Hopefully, Black Desert is going through a bit of a commotion in Korea, since this MMORPG took a turn to the casual side, but we are told that this is due to the player's feedback and that it won't be the same case with the Western versions. Possibly not the deep open world sandbox MMO as it was expected when it was announced, Black Desert still manages to be one of the most exciting MMO games in development day, and it could be just around the corner. And now, a quick list of some awesome games that, in some cases, may already be in alpha, but it's not likely most players will be able to lay their hands on them. Either way, have fun!
get all the MOBAs yet? Good for you, because the developers of Heroes of New Earth has just announced another one, Strike. This is another free-to-play MOBA, and the studio expects the two games to compete between...